TV. What is it that you want your fans to know about uh, Dre and, and Snoop and all this kind of thing? The only thing is that they're not real. It's all acting. So they're all, acting. That's all I say. I mean, if they talk about something, be real. Phyllis Pollock was Easy es publicist and close friend. She conducted the last interview that he ever gave, and it has never been heard publicly. So this is a huge discovery, honestly. Do you remember when you did this? Do you remember what like, yeah, month that it was? was uh, Eric passed away at the end of uh, March, so this was probably done January. Uh, what sort of misconceptions do you think that are out there as far as how you treat your artists or oh, deal with your artists? artists. I treat my artists real good. <clears throat> uh -huh. I mean, I give my artists fair deals. I mean, and the publishing eggs, 50 50 split. When this little situation happened a while back with these uh, uh, <coughs> clan people, and they had the hit on you and skinheads, and they had the hit on you and Rodney King and all that. They wanted to start a race war. So who wanted to? The, the skinheads? Yeah, that I was one person that people probably would care about if something was to happen to. Did the FBI ever warn you, or did they just warn, like, the first day in the church and running kid? The FBI didn't know. There was a white supremacist group that had a hit on Easy e and the FBI knew about it. And they also had a hit on uh, uh, Chuck D from Public Enemy, Reverend Cecil B. Murray of the First AME Church, and uh, Rodney King. Every suspect arrested yesterday has roots here. The alleged hit included the rap musician Eazy E. The Skinhead Brothers had apparently endorsed the plan. Police say the plan included getaway cars, grenades, phony IDs, and alibis. So the FBI told all these people, you know, there's a hit on you, be careful, watch your back. But they didn't tell Eric, and they didn't tell anyone that worked for Eric. Wow. We found out watching the news. Why do you think the FBI didn't warn you, but the FBI went on the news and they bragged about how they warned Rodney King? And oh, no. uh, Did you feel it had anything maybe to do with like uh, a personal vendetta or anything? Oh, no. I don't know. Maybe they didn't want me to know. Maybe they wanted them to get me for real. Oh, it's crazy. Um, yeah. And they were they were upset with him because of his mu music and his lyrics and yeah, the things. Yeah, but you know the FBI and the police are supposed to serve everybody, not just certain people yeah. that they like. I knew NWA has famously been sent a letter from the FBI in 1989 after they wrote the police. But I didn't know that Easy e still may have been on the government's radar years after the incident. Those may hate you. Those may hate you. But when you hate them, then you destroy yourself. There have been theories and rumors for years that the government may have been involved in the death of many rappers. But to hear Easy himself in the very last interview he gave talk about this makes me think that this is something we need to look into much further. Also, being the uh, businessman that you are, uh, what is it that you want your fans to know? So I got my own speakers that's coming out called Easy E's Ruthless Bass Shakers. Yeah, okay. This is, I want to vamp on this a second. This, the, these speakers, because this is going to get... Eric was working on putting out his own speakers way before Dre did, and Dre became a billionaire because wow. of it. That's what this is about. That was one thing that was so screwed up about him dying was he, there were all these things he was gonna do. He had plans for a movie and just 8 million different things. And just you can see he's very optimistic about the future. Yeah. You know, he has a lot he's looking forward to. And then I got my own Super Nintendo game. I got virtual reality, they got interactive vests that you play the games and you can feel the kicks, the punches and everything. Oh, really? Uh, he was so smart. It's all about know-how and everything else, timing, <clears throat> you know, uh -huh. how you do it. <coughs> Marketing, promotion. That's <coughs> all. <coughs> you not say when. Somebody's going to ask you. Can we stop for a second? Sure. When, when he's coughing, was that... Was that alarming to you? Did you... Did he acknowledge it? Did he say, hey, I've got a cold, or... Uh, yeah. Um, well, actually, he used to drink coffee all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, one time I gave him some coffee around this time period and he coughed it up. 
He started For coughing years, and coughed it up. I was like, these walls, I was like, is my coffee that bad? And, you know, because I didn't know. Yeah. Well, was, I mean, I didn't know how sick he was, obviously. On the yeah. of the you know, I'm glad I didn't know. I don't think I would have dealt with it very well if I knew. Mm -hmm. Not because of the illness itself, but just him being that ill, I think it would have been hard to, you know deal with all that knowing you know he was gonna pass away i'm glad i didn't know yeah you know i couldn't listen to his music for a long time after that yeah it was just too much just it's terrible <laughs>